few games have ever been hyped up as much as Activision Blizzard's Destiny. When the news first broke out that Bungie, the creators of the legendary Halo series, were working on the long-awaited MMO FPS, fans of both Bungie and MMOs rejoiced as a game genre that had not yet been attempted was in development. The game has now been out for three months, which is more than enough time to evaluate just what exactly Destiny did right with their launch, as well as what they did wrong. In this review, I will be going over certain aspects of the game that jumped out to me more than others, for good reasons or for bad. There are two types of gaming fans, those who play for the story and those who play for the game and its mechanics. Even those who play the game solely for its mechanics will have to admit that the story and immersion experience of Destiny was a disappointment. In order for a full immersion experience to happen in a game, the story must be compelling. Destiny's story is one that is extremely choppy and makes very little sense to anyone without the aid of an online resource guide put out by a bungee called Grimoire Card. These cards explain the backstory of the backstory to the game's viewers. This is a horrible decision on Bungie's part as this is lazy storytelling. Rather than have the players go out and explore this info and find it in the game, Bungie has them do it online. To be brief, the game is based around your character called a Guardian and is set in a future where human life has nearly gone extinct. If not for the Traveler, a gigantic floating magic orb of light, humanity would be gone and an evil would be controlling the universe. Your character is awoken in old Russia by a ghost, an AI ball voiced by Peter Dinklage, dubbed by the community as Dinklebot. Dinklebot brings nothing more to the game besides directing you where to go and, and adding useless commentary. Dinklebot is a great example of why the game story falls flat. Rather than create a game character that provides an experience to players, such as Cortana from the original Halo series, Dinklebot will give the player mundane missions that 9 times out of 10 involves the player fending up hordes of enemy waves until Dinklebot can either open a door, hack into a computer, or launch some kind of signal. Of all these missions, none of them seem to create a great connection for the player in the overall story. It is just Dinklebot informing players where to go, and after X amount of missions, you are brought to the next planet. That brings us to the next point of the presentation of Destiny. Despite shortcomings related to the game's story, Destiny still managed to create an incredible in-game universe using our solar system as its basis. Each planet is stunningly visual and creates a unique feel that differs from the previous one. As of now, you can only visit Mercury, Venus, Earth, the Moon, and Mars. Despite the fact that you can only stay in Mercury for a short amount of time, the attention to detail for the planet is incredible. There is a solar glare from the sun that is present anywhere on the map, meaning that no matter where you look, it's as if the sun is literally in your eyes. Venus was outstanding, as the planet is divided into two ecosystems. An Amazonian-like rainforest, where pools of colorful liquid are all around the ground, while on the other side, an eerie barren tundra controlled by the hive, a rogue species that is your nemesis throughout the game, lives. Earth was the most disappointing planet by far. The level design was boring, the missions were even more tedious, and the scenery got old fairly quickly. Based in old Russia, it felt as if the entire trip on Earth just took place in a desert mountain region. The other planets had these quirks to them that made them feel unique, such as the sun on Mercury and the pools on Venus. I cannot stop grinning when I got to the moon for the first time. When you first glance into the sky, the scene is incredible. The International Space Station long ago exploded, and its remnants still remain overhead. In addition to that, you can see the glimpses of another galaxy, which resembles a bent spine that is glowing orange in the sky. This sets the tone of eeriness of the planet. Inhabited by the Hive, the planet remains home to some of Destiny's greatest creatures and level design. The final planet available currently is Mars, which, like the moon, is incredibly well designed. The best term to describe the environment is chalky, which from a computer-generated environment speaks volumes to how well-crafted it looks. The Cabal and Vex reside on Mars, the Cabal being a massive titan alien race, while the Vex are an AI race that worship an organic god. There is a fairly popular train of thought among those who have played a quote-unquote MMO before, and that is that the game itself does not truly begin until you reach max level. By reaching level cap, you should unlock the game's end game content, or as many people think, the most worthwhile part of the game. On Destiny's release, the end game content is very limited. There are only two types of content currently in place, strikes and raids. A strike is a three-man operation that takes place on a planet and generally takes around 15 to 20 minutes to finish. The reward for a strike is completely random, with the player either getting a great piece of armor, a weapon, or nothing at all. The other end game content is called a raid, a six-man operation that was promised to take three to six hours to complete. Raids were supposed to be the most redeeming and rewarding piece in Destiny, but instead of getting these marathon-long operations, we were instead merely given extended strikes that only take an hour of our time due to how exploitable these boss fights were. To make matters even worse, to progress in this endgame content, players need to acquire a certain type of gear that has light imbued into it. By gaining more gear with light, they would level up, making the endgame content easier. The only problem with this is that light gear distribution is completely random. 
This means that the only way to progress is to hope that the random number generator that pumps out gear is on your side, else you might end up lagging behind your friends as you finish the game's final content. Destiny was promised as a 10 year franchise, with a new installment coming out every 2 to 3 years. The pieces have been put in place for an amazing game series, however a lot of changes must be made in the future if this series wants to be regarded as one of the greatest of all time. Only recently has Destiny released its first downloadable content, which included another raid and another strike. These are steps in the right direction, as late game content was lacking, but the problem here is that you must now pay for the content in addition. Destiny as it stands only has around 40 hours worth of content. To charge people 15 additional dollars, to charge people 15 dollars for very little playtime is something that Bungie and Activision Blizzard must look hard at if they believe that this franchise will continue to be bought and played in the future.